हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे जाय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंसा परिजगाचार्य अष्टोत्तर सीताशिष में डिवाइन गए सबच नारायण जगत गुरु शिल प्रभुपाद की जाय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंसा परिजगाचार्य अष्टोत्तर सी श्रीमद भक्त सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर गोस्वामी प्रभुपाद की नीताय गौर प्रेमनंदे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So, which verse are we doing? Oh, thirty-two. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. All right. We'll do thirty-two. Ah, uh, what is it? Twenty-sixth of January, two thousand twenty-four. We're doing uh, Canto Four, Chapter Two, Verse Number Thirty-Two. Okay, I got that right. Uh, we'll chant the verse first. Tad Brahma Param. Okay. Tad Brahma Param Am Shudham. Satam Vartma Sanatanam. Vigarhya Yata Pashandam. Daivam Vo Yatra Bhutara. तद ब्रह्म परम शुद्ध सता वर्तम सनातन विगर्हयात पाषंडम दैव वो यूतरा ब्रह्म परम शुद्ध सता वर्तम सनातन विगर्हयात पाषंड दैव वो यूत्र लेडीज वॉन्ट टू गिवेड शॉर्ट तद ब्रह्म परम शुद्ध सता वर्तम सनातन विगर्हयात दैवम वो यत्र भूतरा ओके तद ब्रह्म परम शुद्ध सता दैवम वो यत्र भूतरा I just want to compliment whoever did the very very nicely done. The, the, there's some artwork. There's some. It's beautiful. 
So I just want to com- give some compliments. I don't know who did it, but just a little compliment. Fantastic work there. Okay. Um, Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Nitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Bande Nanda Vrajasri Nam Padre Nam Vikshna Shah Yasam Harikato Gitam Punati Bhunatrayam Tat That I know I always bore you with linguistics but you will notice straight away that both those words are the same Tat That Doesn't take much for Tat to become That while it travels through Europe and comes back to <laughs> English. So I know I always bore you with my linguistics, which just, just put up put up with me. Um, Brahma Veda Paramam Supreme Shuddham Pure Satam of the saintly person. Again there's no difference between Sant, uh, Saint, Satam, Saint, Sant. In English you say saint, and in Sanskrit you say sant. It's all the same words. Um, Purushan, person, same words. English and Sanskrit. Vartma, path. There's actually word Vartma also, but I won't bore you now. Sanatanam, eternal. Vigarya, blasphemy. Even Vigarya is in English. Yata, should go. Pashandham, Tvethesium, Daivam, Deity. So Daivam, Divi, Divine, all these English words come from Daivam, Zeus, Zeus in Greek. Va, your, Yatra, where? Bhutara, the Lord of the Bhutas. Uh, Please um, repeat, by blaspheming the principle of the Vedas, which are the pure and supreme path of saintly persons. Certainly you followers of Bhutapati will descend to the standard of atheism without a doubt. Ah, okay. So I just want to pros- give you a little... Who, uh, is everybody quite acquainted with uh, Bhagavatam here? Anybody never read Bhagavatam or Gita? It's not to embarrass you, I just want to gauge so that I don't throw you on the deep ends. Can you tell anybody not not yet ever acquainted with Bhagavatam or Gita or anything? Oh, uh, you'll be all right. You're such a good artist, so you'll be all right. Okay, so, okay, that's good. So, I can keep it consistent. We need to understand the, a little background before we go in deep into this, what, what's really happening, we need to understand the background. The background is that while uh, describing the progenitors and the chain of the Manus and uh, he was initiating to describe the universal um, creation and the progenitors and the principal demigods and the deities and the supervisors and su- superintendents, Sukadeva Goswami was going through a lineage and he came upon this um, Daksha. Daksha is one of the great progenitors. And while it was there, um, I think, sorry, it's um, dialogue between Vidura and Maitreya, which was referred to Parikshit and um, Shukamharsi. So, by the way, Vidura goes... There is some story around here which has um, some kind of controversy. Could we have a chat about that? And um, Maitre Muni said, yep, sure, we'll have a chat about this. So there was a dispute, there was a cosmic dispute, there was a cosmic, um, okay, dispute may be good. Dispute is a good word. So between the followers of Lord Shiva and the followers of Daksha, so these can be taken in various groups of this world in various ways. The historians, historians may say it's just a dispute between some capitalists and some socialists. Because Daksha represents a very symbolic capitalist. 
and lord shiva the party of lord shiva represents very symbolic socialists if you see the nature of their living if you see the nature of their talk you will clearly see daksha side is a symbolic capitalist and shiva side are a symbolic socialists so historians may say that if it was a social behaviorist like behavioral scientists or behaviorists or social social uh, so in, when i'm saying social i'm meaning behavioral sociologists they may say well it's just a dispute between a father in law and a son in law what's the big deal every father in law has some issue with the son in law <laughs> every mother in law has this issue with daughter in law so saas or bahu ha huh? or sasur or dama in english in hindi it's an eternal dispute so some social behaviorists may say well it just appears to us like a dispute between a you know a father in law and son in law rich father in law and you know carefree son in law what's the big deal some political politicians may say well this looks just to us like a dispute between a right wing and a left wing daksha representing a symbolic image of right wing and lord shiva representing a symbolic jack dead set textbook left wing bhutarat bhutarat in modern language left wing just simple as that you you see what i'm saying sir so devotees or religionist people could say well this is just a dispute or a debate or a quarrel between convention convention religionist and liberal religionists even it goes in iskon there are convention devotees like textbook textbook pakka textbook yeah there are some liberal devotees even in prabhupada disciples there are some people say relax man it's all right chant hari krishna some people say oh, how come you didn't you know do dandavat on the right hand side on the left with the you know how was this finger like this and how it's this everybody has their angles i'm not saying this is right or that's wrong what i'm trying to say religion is may see this as just a dispute between a, a conventional devotees who dis, who are represented by brugu daksha and we have liberal like nandi yeah and lord shiva himself so we need to understand the nature of dispute from a very high level perspective we need to understand the nature of disputes on a very high level perspective because the point to understand the dispute will always be there the war will always be there please understand there was war in mahabharat there was war in ramayan there was war in prahlad story there's wars in bali maharaj story any story you take there is a war the dispute is always there so for example i'll just quickly refer to mahabharat i don't know many of you know a, a, lo- a large population on the planet take the guru of pandavas as dronacharya actually it's not right dronacharya was this their combatant t- like combat teacher military teacher the real teacher of the pandavas anybody knows very good very good see i never i'll never stop loving kamsari singh das dhaumya was actual the teacher of pandavas he actually walked with them all the 12 years when he was in when they were in the forest he was with them when they were humiliated he was with them when they were um there were four or four maybe six i get mixed up the story has been I get mixed up with some stories but four or six assassination attempts dhaumya rishi was there all the time he is the one who was bringing all the rishis to them he was bringing angira to them he was bringing markandeya to them he was bringing maitreya to them he was the one who was negotiating their teachings everywhere they were going he was the one who was consulted if 
Pandavas should go back and um, attempt the Draupadi's wedding. So he says something very interesting. He says the point is not, the Pandavas are obviously at some stage very dis despondent. He says the point is not that there won't be a dispute. The point is not there won't be a war. The point is which side will you be on? Because sometimes I see the utopian articles spread on the social media sometimes. Sometimes on the Facebook, sometimes on all kinds of things. My, my daughter is an expert in all this. And every time she sees, um, that's Mira, my daughter there, if anybody doesn't know. So she has, a, she has, because she does all our portals like Bhakti Yoga portal and Instagram. Sometimes she comes and shows me all these articles. And this utopian... Um, articles I see, you just go and distribute books and the peace, just eternally the peace will be there. No, no, no. The wars will, of this world will stop. Or No, that's utopian world. Even Dhaumya, the teacher of the Pandavas, is saying, there will always be a war. The point you have to decide is which side you want to be. You want to be on the Dharma side or are you, do you want to be on the adharma side? And there's always a choice. We can never say that we didn't have a choice. I'll give you a couple of examples. You want to give me a couple of examples? So even before the Kurukshetra war started, Pancha Janyam, Rushi, Kesha, Devadattam, Dhananjaya, Pondam, Dadma, you know, they were starting to blow the shells. Once the shells were blown, Yudhisthir, the son of Dharmaraj, comes into the middle of the battle and says, just a quick declaration, my soldiers, anybody on the sides of Kurus, if you're not feeling comfortable with your conscience, that fighting on that side is not right, you have a choice to switch to our side. My side here, if anybody who have conscience problems, who don't feel right, who are not feeling like, ah, oh, should I be here? Should I not be here? I'm giving you a choice. Switch on. Switch the sides right now. Because once the war begins, game over. So you just I say, you have a choice. Even now I'm giving a choice. And then, um, what's his name? Jujutsava. Jujutsava. That's where the karate word comes. Jujutsu. Seriously. Seriously. Yujutsava, the word Yujutsava, you becomes J very easily. Like Yesu, Jesu, Jesus, Yesus. So the karate word Yujutsava comes from, Jujutsu comes from Yujutsava. Serious, I'm serious. So you can, okay, you can check etymology, okay? <laughs> so Yujutsava switched parties with whole his clan towards Pandavas. He said, I don't feel right on the other side. I'm coming to the, this side. Uh, okay, that's it. I'll give you another example. I think it was the uh, seventh night or eighth night. Karna had taken vow, actually Karna had taken vow much before, but seventh night of the Kurukshetra war. Karna wasn't fighting, like Achilles in the Trojan War. Anybody read Trojan War? The Iliad and the Odyssey? Oh God. I'll need an hour to explain how the Trojan War resembles so much to Mahabharat. It, you'll be like, it's shocking how much it will. So Achilles is a little, little bit like Karna. He stops fighting because he had issues with Agamemnon, who's like Bhishma. So Karna had issues with Bhishma. So he said, he took a vow, I'm not fighting until Bhishma dies or Bhishma leaves. So Krishna is watching. Hmm. There's a good expert warrior just sitting and twitching his fingers in the tent. So Krishna approaches him. He said, um, I haven't seen you around a little bit on the war. What's going on? He said, well, uh, I have some issues with Bhishma. Ah, okay. Mm. 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 That's interesting. I don't know if I should blame you or should not blame you. And... Um, he says, uh, well, I've got a plan. You are a Kshatriya. Your nature is to fight, right? Switch. You don't like fighting with, with, for Bhishma? You have issues with Bhishma? Switch. 
you are a warrior you are supposed to fight switch now fight for us and karna says ah, i know how this war is going to end i i can see duryodhana dying and his body being carried with decorated with pagdis and all that you know crowns and all that and being buried i can see everybody i can see pandavas being victorious ah uh, but krishna i can't switch sides i have to be with duryodhana why but why but why because we have already committed to a world view there is a very good point that um, william james who is the father of psychology of religions from america he is everybody says carl jung is the father of psychology i don't have any problems with carl jung i really respect him i read about him a lot but personally i think william james is much of a psychology uh, psychology of religion is like real psychologist he was born in 1832 or something like that so nearly 50 years before carl jung so for me he is really the father he says something interesting he says when you come to when we come to a religion when we come to a movement we don't understand that the same old self the same old imperfect self the words that he uses is imperfect self it's 1832 language so they have a way to speak the same old imperfect cell self is just doing a new thing there isn't any actual internal transformation we don't notice that we don't see that we've changed our dress codes we've changed our outfits we may have a tilak we may have a kanti mala and sometimes you know garlands you know we have a little we have a little kind of a you know jazzy music people like it you know with the symbols and the symbols come it sounds like a bit of a jazz and you know the dance comes but what william james says is we don't notice the conversion actually ha- really hit the ground the old self has just taken a new outfit but we haven't actually noticed that ha- we don't we not actually working has the actual inner self started transforming along with the outer self how many of us has ever thought about this? i never i'll be the first to admit i never until i read these books of religious it's called varieties of religious experience his name is william james take a look it's class guy just absolute class to train to being to sincerity in our paths to bring us to our sincerity and another one good book is imitation of christ by thomas compass two books very good books so he says so karna he is dharmic he has read the vedas is but the internal transformation hasn't happened krishna is giving him a choice he is saying i can see the kurus will be gone but i cannot switch sides bhishma knows it's a dharma but he cannot switch sides why because bhishma uh, panchali panchal and kuru kuru had a political motivations and bhishma couldn't by fighting again with pandavas means would be fighting with panchala and bhishma that's a political no no for bhishma so that's one of the main reasons people give so many reasons but the actual reasons why bhishma didn't fight with pandavas is because panchala's kingdom was with pandavas and panchala and kurukshetra um hastinapur were always like france and london france and uk you know this love hate relationship like bitter sweet love hate relationship so all his life he was fight he was defending against panchala so fighting with pandavas means fighting for panchala with drupada <laughs> no no no, no, no. That, that's not happening so that's one reason but most of the people say oh, it's because he was on the payroll of kurus and uh, seriously bishma gives a rats for like his salary 
So there's so much to go through. So anyway, the in, what happens is eventually you will see that on the um, deathbed, then he admits, like, I was a deontologist, I was a deontologist, act-based ethics. I should have more seen consequences, you know. And then he instructs with this. Anyway, where I'm trying to get you is, there is always a war. We don't live in a utopian world. We don't. Does everybody understand utopia? Utopia, you don't. Utopia is like kind of an uh, idealistic world. That you understand? No. Utopia is like kind of some kind of idealistic world. You can imagine that, but it doesn't come. Like, uh, do you understand a bit now? So it's a utopian world that there will never be a war. Everywhere is the peace. No, it's not like that. The peace is in which side you will choose. And that will come by Shruti, Smriti, Pura, Nadi, Pancha, Ratram, Vidhim, Vina, Aikantika, Harer, Bhakti, Utpataiva, Kalpate. The reason we end up in the wrong side of the battles, the reason we end up in the wrong sides of the war, because we haven't considered Shruti, Smriti, Puranadi, Pancharatrim, Vidhim, Vina. Aikantika Hare Bhakti. Aikantika, just doing Hare Bhakti, just chanting Hare Krishna, but we haven't learned the practicality of Desha Kala Pramana. We haven't seen the practicality of Desha Kala and Pramana, time, place, and circumstances. Conditions. When we don't consider this based on pramana of the Shruti, Smritis, Puranas and Itihasas, Aikantika Hare Bhakti. Just chanting Hare Krishna, I'll go to, um, of course, chanting Hare Krishna, you go to uh, spiritual world. But the point is, can you imagine when you, when you have an understanding of the mantra? Can you imagine you, when, you un, when you see the dharma behind the mantra? Can you see your gravity in the chanting then? Otherwise it's just like as, as powerful as you know paddling in a canoe. Like just Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But can you see the gravity that will come into you? When you understand the dharma behind it. When you understand the dispute will always be there. I have to choose which side I'm going to be on. So that is really the battle going on here. So what happened in a rush of when, when people, two big figures, Daksha and Shiva, have fought, all the followers automatically get into the turmoil. It just happens. It's just natural. So Nandi got involved. Nandi was very furious. He said, you brahmanas, you just fill your bellies. Just do some pujas. Just some rituals, fill your fat bellies, bring the ghee, bring the butter, you know, eat, and just doing Veda so that you can accept some, you know, you know, warm up your wallets. That's what you guys are. You have no idea of Lord Shiva. Do you have any clue what Lord Shiva is? Of course, you should defend a good devotee. There's no doubt about that. And then now what's happening? Brugu has taken charge. So Nandi went on on the Brahmanas, you conventionalists, you smarthas, you think just by chanting Vedic mantras, you achieved freedom, you achieved liberation, you detached. You have no idea what Vedas means. Just look at Shiva's life and you'll know what. The Vedic purpose can be understood if you just see Lord Shiva's life. How dare you talk about Lord Shiva like that? And then now Brugu is taking charge. Back on. Brugu is saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So in modern terms, what these kind of arguments are called, strawmen. Have you ever heard this? Anybody heard this? Strawmen? Strawmen, of course, yeah. 
so it's called strawman arguments strawman arguments means when two people start disputing they're not comparing apples to apples they're comparing my good as like for example i don't want to have any dispute with anybody but i'm just taking an example what's your name John Jonathan just say Jonathan and I had a dispute yeah and i'm comparing my very good apples to very rotten bananas in Jonathan's basket or Jonathan is comparing beautiful shining strawberries to rotten mangoes in my basket we're not comparing apples to apples do you see what i'm trying to say so when nandi started a go having a go at them what he's doing he has done obviously he was supporting he was the impulse rush of blood you know to defend lord shiva what he said is the whole brahmanas are like that but actually not all brahmanas are like that some are some smartas are some people are only brahmana children can be brahmanas or you know these you know non indians can never go become brahmanas or these kind of silly things when you go to brugu now he is doing again the same thing every lord shiva's devotees they are all bhutrad they are all naga babas you know they are all white beard you know big beards and chanting mantras and mystic people they have no um schedule they have no perfect sadhanas what are you guys have you ever touched vedas hey 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 wait 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 he is a vedeshwara he is called bhagwan he is addressed as bhagwan lord shiva when chitraketu visited lord shiva he was astounded listening to lord shiva's bhagavatam class you know what i'm saying so um the brothers from the forest god get mixed up the brothers that came out of the forest and started cursing the trees prachita sorry thanks so the prachetas they were astounded by shiva lord shiva's bhagavatam class so you talking about like just giving general statements just loose statements what is he saying here by blaspheming the principle of vedas which are pure and supreme path of the saintly person certainly you followers of bhutapati lord shiva will descend to the standard of atheism without a doubt just a general statement no qualifying it just shooting arrows at each other this is called straw man argument straw man arguments means you taking the weakest point of the like for example i'll tell you for our age many i uh, a sankirtan story sankirtan story sankirtan story sankirtan story okay so i was doing books um, i'm i mean some of you may know I, i like doing books i'm always on the roads three I, i tried to go three times a day uh, a week sometimes two sometimes three sometimes two sometimes three but i'm on the roads i love it it's just, i like it it's not because anyway i like i like it so anyway so i was on the books and one of these guys said oh aren't you guys uh, those hare krishnas we used to see in the he was an older gentleman um um what do they call them sorry i don't mean to be offensive or anything wogs or some western oriented gentleman wogs they call them wogs so he was a wog like middle eastern and uh, middle eastern european people they call them wogs don't you know it wogs w o g it was popular when i was when i was young so you know yeah yeah of course so they call him wogs i don't know I do, i'm not pronouncing correctly but they call him wogs anyway he said oh, i remember you guys you are the guys in the 60s the guys who goes around the flower generation the you know the white powder the you know drag na hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare yeah i'd love to do that too yeah i i yeah i i get used to that and i said whoa, whoa 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 what are you talking about i even watched an indian movie i picked one indian movie from this erskinwell 
he was this was from the 90s 80s and there was a big indian a movie store we actually watched that we know where the place is in the, even in the 80s there was an indian movie store and aussies used to pick up some movies from there i watched that movie you know yeah little puff in the nose you know you know little ganja yeah good hari krishna i could get used to it i say wo 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 no that's not hari krishna maybe that was some people that was going through conversion experience but can you just brand the whole hari krishnas to be um what's the best way to say this <laughs> i mean usually people say dopes right out in colloquially can you just say all hari just because that movie shows like hari krishnas were some of the hari krishnas were used to drugs can you just go out and say yeah they're all dopes no you can't it's very 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 childish to say that so in the same way you cannot just go and say to lord shiva oh, all you lord shiva's followers are dopes naga babas sahajiyas where you where you know big beards you have some of them maybe some of them maybe but don't don't go on this you know tirade of you know all the brahmanas are filling their bellies you know all they want is money money donation you want a donation you want a donation that's all you want yeah and shiva followers um daksha followers so that's what you want your donations you know brugu followers but on the other hand we have problem with lord shiva followers yeah you're all dopes you know just you know puffing you know no spotting your noses or something like that no we have to be careful with these kind of things when a quarrel is happening when there is a dispute these two things i mention one the quarrel the disputes the battles the wars will always be there don't there's no need to live in utopian worlds listen to rama um, bharat and rama's discussion when rama uh, comes back listen to yudhishthira's and narada's discussions listen to dhaumya's discussions with pandava the battles the wars the disputes will be there the shastras will dis- the shastras and the gurus will guide you which side to be on so that paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya dharma samsthapanarthaya ya do you see do you see so we don't need to because the problem i the reason i'm stressing this is when you when we when we start in hari krishnas when we come into devotional life and when we have in our minds that there will never be a dispute there'll never be a quarrel there'll never be a war in the world or we we you we we create these images of utopia this idealistic and then all of a sudden we see a dispute all of a sudden we see a quarrel where what what's going to happen to our confidence what's going to happen to our confidence nose dive but when we see this from a purana itihasas point of view that the conflicts will always be there our choice is which side we want to be on to protect the dharma so the dharma prevails so the sadhus prevail though so the scriptures prevail yeah so krishna says in 16th chapter ya shastra vidhim utsrujya vartate kamakarata na cha siddhim avapnoti na sukham na param gatim ya shastra vidhim utsrujya vartate kamakarata na cha siddhim avapnoti na sukham na param gatim they don't achieve the desired results they, des- uh, they don't achieve the bliss that's supposed to come from the shastras na sukham na param gatim neither here nor there 
in, in, in it means hereafter have i given you a base D does it make sense is it like did i take you on a scenic route here like we were supposed to go to this and then i took you on a scenic route like a sightseeing tour or something or do you do you feel like a context to what's going on here how many do or how many don't can i just have some show sure, fans do anybody feels that there's no context to please tell me cuz i want to clarify cuz um um the the reason i'm doing this is because i see a, lo a lot and lot and lot of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments on social media as i hear and i hear a lot a lot a lot devotees being discouraged in their devotional life devotees being di discouraged in their life devotees can't take one step ahead as soon as they see a dispute as soon as they see a quarrel as soon as they see a they even see a battle in their lives i did so much service i was distributing books for 14 years i was there out 46 degrees in the streets i was walking with 15 kilos of books on my back and knocking doors i gave my life sweat and blood and i collected so much um dakshina to for this mission i've distributed so much prasad and what did it come to <laughs> the way i got humiliated they humiliated me they excommunicated me they cancelled me i gave my life for 20 years i cooked the in the kitchen i was sweating my life off 46 degrees outside in the kitchen it's 10 degrees more isn't it 46 degrees outside in the kitchen is 60 degrees i was there and then the when you're washing it has to be warm water to get rid of all the um the grease so it's 46 degrees outside the ovens are all on and it's 66 56 inside and then you have to work with the hot water tap i did that for 14 years <laughs> and what did i get I'm not saying you should you should not feel sad. I'm not saying you should not feel I feel sad. I feel sad. I'm not saying I sh you should not feel sad. What I'm trying to say is when you see a dispute you have to quickly reflect that it was a utopia in my mind. The dispute is always going to be there. Are we more better devotees than Pandu? they got kicked out of their kingdom in their teenage they got they got they got six assassination attempts they wandered around the forests all the way across from eka chakra right to the east of the country to all the way to the left dwaraka all the way to the south all the way to the north on foot my dear brothers and sisters but dhaumya was there with them the guru's instruction was always there it was very difficult you have to read the dialogues between even themselves they fought bhima was always against dharmaraj no we shouldn't do this no we can no we don't need to fight what do you mean you don't need to fight you know what they said 12 years right he quotes a purana markande purana or some purana he quotes a purana it says like it says that 12 night for a for a royal prince 12 nights out of his kingdom is as good as 12 years so we've already been 12 12 nights outside let's go back and you this there is na, na, a good try <laughs> nice try brother nah be mind you this all always compare draupadi never let you this there sit peacefully throughout the 12 13 years how did you let this happen how did you gamble how did you do this you are supposed to be dharmaraj he heard all 12 years that they were they were disputing themselves and they were disputing they were their disputes outside they were on wars and I, we face that i face that 
you face that but when we see the disputes it sometimes it just you can't take one step ahead anymore you know i was speaking with a devotee a very nice devotee book distributor who has visited from new zealand i was in um, a retreat um, just a couple of weeks ago uh, with devamrit swami maharaj in a recharge festival so one some of the devotees wanted after we spoke she said i want to come and distribute some books with you and she she spoke and i sp- she was asking me some questions about what to do when this difficulty what do you do i said i co- i collapse don't think like i am made of steel i collapse and some people some devotees even said you know to hell with this beads you know Damn. if this has come to this if this life has come to this to hell with this beads I said to her what we can do is this what I can do is this if i was reading reading 40 pages a day if it's really tough read one page if you're doing four days of books do at least one day but keep the momentum going it's like a test match cricket when the pitch is playing up and it's not a batting circumstances what does the batter do just block the ball just block the ball just block it don't try for too much just block the ball indians will understand the test cricket and of course australians so if i can't read 20 pages read one page if you can't go for books 5 days go 2 days one day seek guidance talk to devotees talk to guides there will come a point 14 15 20 25 years i still remember 2000 year 2000 i stepped into this temple atmaram prabhu was giving a class so i've seen 25 years now 24 now right 20, 2024 so if i count 2000 also it's 25 years 25 years I've seen so much so many I've seen myself in difficulties I've seen so many difficulties devotees in difficulties some people just said drop this beads you know to hell with this you know bhakti marg and left but this is what I say to myself if you can't take 10 steps take one step on the day but keep the momentum going The reason we get disappointed the reason we collapse is because we have an ideology an idealistic idealistic world in our minds the disputes will always be there the wars will always be there which side are you going to take with the pramana of guru guru sadhu shastra and time place circumstances can everybody please repeat what are the things that we going to consider because everybody is going to come into this trust me everybody last class I, i spoke about hitting the bottom and one of the devotees asked me what do you mean by hitting the bottom that's what i mean every devotee will come to that point where we don't know where to turn then what do we th- what are the six things that we consider we fall back on guru i can't hear you sadhu shastra time place circumstances we fall back on these things and then one step there is something self evidently beautiful about krishna you cannot it's very hard to give empirical evidences there is something self evidently true about krishna i'll give you one example okay and then i'll finish this class or oh, maybe i should read the purport right oh god otherwise you're going to you're going to go and ask for refunds we don't do refunds yeah please understand um Lord Shiva is described here as Bhutarat the ghost and those who are situated in the material mode of ignorance 
are called bhutas so bhuta rat refers to the leader of the creatures who are the lowest standard of the material modes of nature another meaning of bhuta is anyone who has taken birth anything he's who's produced so bhuta it's just it's sanskrit word i don't want to bore you i can explain you why why it means ghosts and why it means living beings i don't want to bore you with linguistics today some other time uh where was i lord shiva may be accepted as the father of the material world here of course bhrugumuni takes lord shiva as the leader of the lowest creatures see i said about the strawman argument lowest of the creatures just everybody of lord shiva's devotees are dopes don't speak like that um the characteristics of the lowest class men have already been described they don't bathe they have long hair i spoke about that nagababas addicted to intoxicants i spoke about that dopes in comparison with the path followed by the followers of bhutara the vedic system is certainly excellent see i said about comparing not comparing apples to apples is comparing the rotten mangoes on shiva's side but we are excellent brahmanas comparing not comparing apples to apples i spoke about that uh, for it pr- promotes people in spiritual life as the highest eternal principles of human civilization if one dis- discry- decries or blasphemes the vedic principle then he falls to the standard of atheism well actually i actually covered the whole purport i didn't have read it but i actually practically covered it so he's just comparing rotten apples to good bananas or rotten bananas or good apples then he's not comparing fine things to fine things on both sides it's called straw man argument so i'll finish with one story you want yeah because i said something important there is something to say to be said about krishna's um self evident beauty and i'll say you something so i was doing books on the road one day i always come up with like sankirtan stories yeah. did i complete the previous sankirtan story i did i did i did someone said like yeah. so one more sankirtan story and i'll finish so i was doing books um uh where was i doing books marylands yes i was doing books in marylands one day people always tell me don't go there don't go there don't go there but i i don't like to just go to the you know good spots all the time i want to sometimes it has to be an austerity so i purposefully sometimes choose the real tough ones like cabramatta maryland like maryland granville the tough ones not because i'm i'm a tough guy i just want to get exposed everywhere so one day i was going and granville you can maryland you can imagine you know this was like just after the sunday church time no sunday it was saturday saturday sorry it was saturday there's this nice beautiful girls walking on the other side of the road and there's some some boys you know what boys do in the teenagers just after 12 years and they saw the girls and they did this one of those like you know you do the whistle like that to the girls and i saw that i noticed that i was in the books and i presented the books and she the, one of the boys said uh, what is so good about this book i said they're very beautiful to read he said they're looking at the girls and they said to me well we are watching something very beautiful as we speak might so you can keep your books in the back and i said um, okay you can continue the glaring and then we can talk so the girls passed away obviously they were very beautiful girls i mean all girls are beautiful they have their own every everybody had their own um, rasa so this is beautiful and then i said finished they said finished i asked them a question i've been for the past 22 23 years i've been reading this this i've been chanting these books this is lunch time the same lunch time for the past 22 23 years i've been chanting these books for 22 23 years in my lunch break one one and a half hour all my 22 years if i'm working or not working i've been able to chant this book for 22 years and i've been able to sustain this the beauty of this text the beauty of this shloka the beauty of these verses if one of those beautiful girls that you were whistling to if she actually came and say you you know got her will you able will you be able to sustain walking with her every day one and a half hour speaking with her for 22 years the boy said um um and the other guy the wise guy said na 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 a week or two most 
you know the initial thrill you know wipes fades off the initial you know you see the real person after four coffees you know oh god <laughs> when when is this date good <laughs> when is this date going to finish now you call her for a date or she call him for a date and 6 o'clock they caught up and they think after the third fourth and fifth thinking she says something and you go oh god when is this going to 6 o'clock i said we're going to be here for 7 and at 7 o'clock and my mother is calling she has something to do could we please finish this now and the girl is going same with the girl the girl might say say oh i'm getting phone calls from my father you're such an idiot um i got to go oh god, i can't believe what you said you said then i didn't i didn't i didn't think you're such a fool um oh i got to go i got to go it's finished like he says in f- the, the thrill last four weeks but i said i've been able to sustain walking with this verses chanting these verses since 2000 2001 this is nearly 20 when i met them was maybe 2021 or 22 i met them i said i've been able to sustain this for 22 years will you be able to walk with this girl one and half hour every afternoon for 22 years and talk to her she said, <laughs> no 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 way and i said that's something to say about the self evident beauty of these books i may be destroyed tomorrow i may fall down so do i'm not being like self righteous you know i'm the self righteous i've been able to sustain and i will sustain i'm not saying maya may get me but at least there is something to say about the self evident beauty of krishna if someone has been able to do even for that long even if i fall down even if i uh, even if i am discovered to be the most obnoxious weed in the devotee community say hypothetically it happened but there is still something to talk about self evident truth about these texts these verses there is something self evident about the beauty of krishna do you understand the meaning of self evident you understand the self evident self evident means when the sun comes up nobody has to come and tell you with a candle that the sun has come up it's self evident the light is self evident the day is self evident i don't need to say come and say to you um mata ji prabhu ji um the sun is out today the day is out then you'll say radhika prasad is what i'm trying to say that self evident i don't need to tell you this day outside the sun is outside that's what self evident means there's no explanation for something it is self evident so there is something to say about the self evident beauty of krishna something to say about the self evident even if i fall down but that statement that i made to that boy still is valid even if i even if i get destroyed as a bhakta even if i fall down but there's still something to be said about the self evident truth that if someone has been able to sustain this talking to these verses for one and a half hour every lunch day for past two decades what 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 is what are these words infusing to us this definitely much more than carnal beauty definitely much more than just a beauty of flesh now you might be asking you might be thinking did they take the books is that's the question right is that the question that's the question in book distributors mind going on now did they take the books 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 they took the books Haribo! <laughs> so, um, is that okay? You happy with everything? So, um, thank you very much. Um, I really, this is a long weekend and you didn't need to hear my boring philosophy, my boring sociology, my boring linguistics. But you are here and you patiently heard, so I really want to thank you. I, and I know, I understand how painful it is to listen to me. so don't think i don't understand your pain 
all the philosophy all the references to all this so called scholars and all this i can understand your pain when you're in my classes so i can please know that i know and i really want to with folded palms want to acknowledge and give my gratitude to you for being here and doing this bhagavatam class i will never take you for granted and if you have any comments something ab about i said doesn't fit quite fit the jig pass jig so puzzle for you i'm happy to take some comments don't go my with my body language and you know all the gimmicks and the, <laughs> the, the anyway if you have any questions please i'm i'm happy to take just a comment or a question even a comment is fine if even if you agree or disagree that's fine even if you say i, I agree or that's fine any question wow i've done a good job either have done a good job either there's two reasons nobody ask questions but gurudev always says <laughs> and my gurudev always tells me anyway even if i say something he says radhika prasad you talk rubbish <laughs> he always says that <laughs> after he listens to me like for i say i keep on going for 12 minutes 15 minutes he asks me something and i go for 12 minutes and he goes Adi ke pasad, just talk rubbish. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, good. So uh, either that's the case, or you just got everything I said. So anyway, I'll end there. Um, Vancha kalpaturu bhesha, krupa sindhu bhevacha, patita nam pavane bhyo, vaishnav bhyo namon namaha, sarve jana sukhino bhavantu. Let there be the light of Bhagavatam everywhere on this planet. Mitai gor premanande.